Stage two of the learner period is about applying the skills learned in stage one on quiet roads at low speeds. In this stage, the learner will practice some specific maneuvers, such as turning at quiet roundabouts and intersections, performing parallel parks and three-point turns, and doing regular head checks. Stage two requires the parent and learner to plan their route together before they start driving. Head checks, head checks, head checks. Yeah, mum was obsessed with them. We took the car out onto roads I knew weren't that busy. Still working on controlling the car, but also dealing with a bit of traffic and a few hazards. Yeah, I remember doing lots of stopping and starting, pulling into curbs and taking off, getting the distance between the tyre and the curb run. It's a whole other story once you get out on the road. It's pretty hard to find quiet streets to practice on. We tried to spend as little time as possible on those really busy streets right at the start. Around here there's pedestrians, there's always traffic. Because I have limited time, we were very methodical about it. Uh, I always had a plan in advance. We started by doing simple left turns at intersections, then turns at quiet roundabouts, and then three-point turns in quiet streets. Yeah, in stage two I was pretty nervous. Not, oh my God, I'm freaking out nervous, just regular nervous. But if you haven't driven on roads with traffic before, it's a bit crazy. When they're first starting out, they're so focused on the road, they're not really thinking about where they're going, so you've got to do all of the navigating yourself and turning right at intersections is pretty nerve-wracking. Well, you're driving pretty slow at first, so you might get a few cars backed up behind you and you can tell they're not happy, so you might feel a bit pressured. When they're new to driving, they've got to learn at the pace that's right for them. That means that other drivers just have to wait. I told Tim, you know, just focus on the road. Don't worry about rude people. It was really tough early on. Yeah, some drivers are really pushy. You have to work really hard not to get pissed off. Yeah, we certainly had a few moments. <laughs> There's a few angry people out there, but Tim didn't let them get to him too much. Sometimes you get so caught up in things that you miss stuff. Like I nearly hit a cat because I was concentrating on my mirrors. Luckily, I was watching the road, so we stopped in time. I think learners are really focused on the car at this stage, so they don't always see what's coming. Your role as a parent is to look out for those dangers up ahead. Learning to parallel park was a real problem. He was so precise. Oh, no, no left, no right. You have to approach this from a 15 degree angle. It's like, sometimes just let me do it my way. Yeah, look, I was a bit controlling and I had to learn how to let go. In fair weather, wet weather and at night, learners should be able to move off and stop at curbs and on hills, drive safely on quiet roads, curves, roundabouts and at low speed roads, obey traffic signs and traffic lights, slow down before intersections, turn right at intersections, use the mirrors, do head checks, make safe turns, leave a safe space between other cars, complete parallel parks and three-point turns, reverse out of driveways, and detect and respond to potential hazards. Remember, learners need to do all these things consistently before they can move on to the next stage. Some parents find it useful to use a professional instructor to help them decide when their learner is ready to move on to stages three and four. You could arrange a lesson and ask the instructor about moving on to the next stage. The instructor will also be able to tell you if there are any driving skills that need extra practice.